Hi, everybody. All right, so last time we talked about internal versus external fertilization and development and um, the different strategies of either producing a lot of offspring, um, but having a big risk of loss or having very few offspring and taking really good care of them. Now we're gonna turn our attention to development. So if de development is external, generally it's in an egg, like a chicken egg. Um, and the structures there are for this baby um, to survive. Um, so the baby is going to be growing by mitosis and doing differentiation, and that requires energy. Remember, energy depends on cell respiration, and for cell respiration in an organism like a bird, it needs oxygen. So it's going to have structure for food and for oxygen. You see right here the yolk sac. You see those blood vessels that carries nutrients from the yolk sac to the baby, so the baby can use those materials for growth and for energy. And this right here, the Alan Twees, is... Um, a membrane that allows oxygen to go through little tiny holes in the eggshell across these membranes and into those blood vessels. And those can be carried, the oxygen can be carried to the cells so that all the cells of the baby can do cell respiration and have ATP for energy for life processes as it grows. The rest of it is for protection. You've got the shell that protects, you have the chorion, which is around the entire thing filled with fluid that protects, rolls back and forth, the baby doesn't get too jostled. Um, and then there's the amnion that is also around the baby, um, much like our amniotic sac that we'll talk about for pregnancy. So that's external development in birds. There actually are mammals that also lay eggs much in the same way. Um, the echidna or the platypus um, are egg laying mammals. Why are they called mammals if they lay eggs? Well, because they produce milk. And that's the key um, characteristic that puts some organism into the mammal category. So these two produce milk for their offspring, so they're considered mammals, but they lay eggs much like the chicken. Very similar situation. We also have, um, in addition to egg laying mammals, we have marsupials. Marsupials are pouched animals. There's a kangaroo with a baby in its pouch. Um, the baby actually develops with a yolk and an Alan Twist, just like the bird inside um, the body of the uh, kangaroo for a very, very, very short time. And then the baby is born and crawls out and gets in the pouch. There are um, milk glands there for the baby to get food um, and it grows there. Uh, in the pouch, and when it's ready, it can get out and in and um, will for a while be carried around by mom in the pouch, giving a lot of protection to the baby, but also being able to hop out and jump around. So they live um, in Australia. These guys are in their pouch. That's the pouch in the mom. Um, and these guys are opossums. Opossums um, are marsupials that live here in North America. And the babies hang out in the pouch and they're pretty cute. Look at his little goofy ears. Um, and when mom walks around with them after they're out of the pouch a lot, they will hang out on top of her back and she'll walk around with all these babies attached to her. So mammals can be laying eggs. They can be marsupials with pouches or they can be like us. They can be placentals. That is, we have a placenta. This is a really important structure. Um, the baby is attached by an umbilical cord to a bunch of blood vessels. The blood vessels are partly baby's blood vessels and mom's blood vessels. When mom breathes in, <gasps> oxygen goes to her lungs, travels through the bloodstream, and it comes to the blood vessels in here that are hers, and it diffuses out of her blood vessels into baby's blood vessels that are also here, and then travel through and go to all of baby's cells so baby has oxygen for doing cell respiration. Mom eats, digests the food, the nutrients go from the small intestine into the bloodstream, travel around, go through her blood vessels, mom's blood vessels here, diffuse out of mom's blood into baby's blood and go down the umbilical cord and go to all the cells so that baby has food for growing, for energy, um, has oxygen. And then baby produces wastes like carbon dioxide when the baby does cell respiration and that comes back out, goes from baby's blood vessels to mom's blood vessels, goes into mom's bloodstream, travels around and she exhales it from her Okay, so the placenta is for exchanging materials between mom and baby. The blood vessels in the placenta are actually made up of two separate things. There's mom's blood vessels and there's baby's blood vessels and they don't mix. They do not mix blood. Things have to diffuse across the membrane, out of mom's blood, into baby's blood, 
into, and then goes to baby, and then baby makes stuff. It goes from baby's blood, diffuses into mom's blood. The, ba the blood does not mix within the placenta. The placenta is made of mom's and baby's blood, but the two do not um, mix. And that's really, really important. Um, the materials do not mix. The regents loves to test that. And that's placentals.